So welcome everyone uh, to sadly the last session for the paper folding. Um, we are going to schedule some geometry classes on Sundays, the dates to be announced. So check um, the Creative Dimension website for details about that. So there'll be some um, pattern making, more compass and ruler um, patterns this time. Um, if you're new to this, this, if this is your first session, then uh, welcome. My name is Adam Williamson. I'm a carver, sculptor, and I have a passion for folding and I use a lot of folding techniques to um, test out ideas and concepts that I can use for, for building uh, sculptures or carving pieces in stone. We are going to carry on from the pattern we worked on last week. I hope you will manage to collapse it in the end into, into a finished piece. We're going to carry on and move to a sort of next level of complexity. <clears throat> what you need for today is a square piece of paper. So if you've arrived with an A3 sheet, um, then we went through a similar process this last time. You just need to rotate one of your sheets to 90 degrees and use the edge of the paper to cut out your um, square. If you like, you could also, if you have a bit of um, origami paper, square paper available, you're welcome to use that too. Uh, I'm just gonna use a ruler for this. So I'm gonna place my ruler here. The thickness of paper is up to you. So this is similar to last week. What you'll find is that folding the paper, a thinner piece of paper, uh, like an 80 GSM piece, you know, like your, your usual um, photo proof paper is easier to fold the initial creases. Um, but for the collapsing, for the three dimensional element, it's a bit harder because, you know, it doesn't always, sometimes it will crease on the facets, on the triangles or the squares. So I find if you struggle through using a thick piece of paper with the initial folds, when you come to do the collapsing, the facets, the faces have a little bit more rigor to them and um, they won't bend and collapse. So I wind my ruler up here. You can use scissors for this if you like. You could even just draw a line with your pencil and then cut it out with scissors. But I'm gonna tear it off. I have my square all ready to go. <clears throat> now, this one is going to start with a series of squares, like last time. Um, they're going to be very small, and we're just going to go through a series of folds. So, fold it in half. I'm going to draw, fold, fold all the horizontal folds first. Make sure that they're nice and accurate. So fold up to the center. So firstly, I've got my paper folded into quarters. I'm going to reverse those folds too. Okay, so first stage, <clears throat> just folding the paper into quarters. It's, it's going to be quite similar to last week in the sense that we're going to have uh, a series of squares and then over those squares we're going to have staggered crosses, but these ones are going to leave one little square empty so in order that we get this very beautiful um, bulbous effect and we create these stars. It's, it's a really nice pattern. All right, so now let's fold it into eighths. So let's fold up to the quarter. There's different ways you can get that in a fold. I'm just going to fold a quarter point to the center. Those folds as well. So 
all the folds that I'm making, I'm reversing them. Make sure that I have a nice articulation. Make sure when you're doing those reverse folds, you, you use the correct fold. You don't give yourself an extra crease. Pretty straightforward from here. Once you've done that, we're going to rotate the paper 90 degrees and do the same the opposite way, well, along the um, verticals. Let's fold in half again. Okay, so I have a nice grid of squares now. Uh, I'm just going to reverse my folds. Um, if and when you complete the, the grid of triangles, of squares, um, I'd like you to find a pencil. So something like a red or blue pencil, something quite dark, or a soft pencil, if you don't have a colour pencil. We're going to draw in the crosses, you see. Do we have to draw the um, lines as well? Yes, please. Yeah. So but you can draw them with a um, with a pencil rather than the pen. And you don't necess necessarily have to use a ruler. I'm using a ruler so that I get a nice example for you. But if it's in pencil, it's something that might not necessarily show up in the final design. So. All right, that's better. Okay, so you can see how the crosses just come down in a staggered fashion. All right, in fact, I might do them in different colors, which might make it a bit more apparent for you. Okay. So you can see how the crosses are coming down here. So I have like a turquoise series of crosses and a staggered approach and then a blue one. And you should see it, it leaves a square empty. So we have an empty square here, an empty square here in between the crosses. I've got my three fingers on those three empty squares. All right, draw the next line. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we have crosses in the staggered approach. Might even color in the squares for you so you can see the empty squares. Doing the coloring in. So you don't have to do this. This is purely so that you can see what's happening. So this, this, these squares that I'm coloring in are free of any folding. Okay, so you don't have to be doing this. I'm just doing it so that you can see where there is no fold. No fold in these squares. I'm quite excited to see how this color coding looks in the fold. I don't usually color in my folding. I quite like it just white. Okay, so I do have a few more crosses to do as well. Do the purple one. One up, one up here as well. And once we have all these elements in, we can start to fold and the collapse is actually pretty quick. I find collapsing this one a little bit easier than last week's. But without the coloring, the folding can be a little yeah, more tricky is the, as you could see, <laughs> the arrangement of the crosses. Color this last one for you. So if you were there last week, if you were here last week with me, um, basically we're gonna fold the crosses all in the same direction. Okay, so the, the crosses need to be folded up and the, the, we don't really have to worry about the vertical and horizontal lines for now because we've folded them in both directions, they should fall into line. But all of the crosses need to be folded in the same direction. So what I'd recommend is turning your paper over so that the pencil is facing down. Okay, and then you can fold up and see the line. So when I'm folding my paper up to fold my little Across, I can see the line. Yeah, so I mean, this is up to you, but I find this way the easiest. So I'm, I'm going to go around and fold all of these crosses. All the crosses need to be folded. Right. As you can probably see in the video, it's actually one I did before the class, so mine were already folded. <laughs> um, so I'm going to leave this here as a little example for you um, before I collapse it. I might even start to make it a little bit three dimensional. But I'd like you guys now to start folding all those crosses 
in one direction. I'm going to now show you what to do. So once you have all the crosses, um, you'll see that it already has a little bit of um, an upward motion. So you'll see some of the crosses pushing to the forefront. And then basically, I'm going to start pushing the, the paper together. And I need to like prod. So if you can look here, this cross, this point should be low. So the corner, so the, the ends of the crosses need to be pushed down. And the, the crosshairs of the crosses, so that where they intersect, they are going to be up. So all the squares that are coloured in are going to be flat against the table. And I just basically start to compress the thing together. Until all of those squares are flat, all the crosses come together. And once I've got it to this stage, I'm going to go and squeeze those crosses so that they hold together. Squeeze them all, but ultimately you should have a nice little set of nine squares and then you have like another four on the outside. You have those nice squares that come together. And then when you flip it over, you have a really fun, cool, um, malleable folding effect. And it has this dome quality. You can kind of expand and play with. Uh, it's got lots of possibilities. If you really want to take this a bit further, you can um, make a much bigger set of uh, um, squares, so just work with a bigger grid and more triangles with the same understanding that you stagger the the crosses and you'll ultimately get a huge version of this and it'll become a lot more like a geodesic dome. Okay, well, that's quite fun with the colours. So once you're at this stage, literally you're squeezing the piece together slowly making sure that my squares are flat against the table and my crosses are high. And as you go, as I was just telling Hannah, you can literally just squeeze these crosses together. So you, it might only be that you can work on some of the crosses uh, at, one, at one stage, but as you go, squeeze them and then you can leave those ones behind and they'll stay in the right orientation. Um, so I'm squeezing them all together. Each side and then pushing the squares flat to the table um, and it will never stay completely compressed unless you maybe use some glue or tape if you want to, to keep it like this um, i.e. like with all the squares together but there's a nice kinetic quality to it so once it's pushed together i quite like the way it just naturally opens up and reveals the stars uh, well, anyway, it's been a real pleasure, everyone. That you, uh, thanks for tuning in each week. And um, as I say, I'm going to be teaching some Sunday geometry classes using a compass and ruler. So if you'd like to join those and have a, have the equipment, then check the Creative Dimension website. So thanks, everyone. Um, have a lovely week and keep folding. Please keep it up. Hey.